What's up, everybody? My name is Zlatko Strunac. I have uh, Benji Radic uh, t uh, with me on Skype. Uh, Benji, you have started start your MMA career in 2001 as a professional. Uh, why did you start to train MMA and fight in MMA? So I, I, started, I started wrestling at a young age. Uh, you know, I was like four years old. My dad was like the youth, re youth wrestling coach for my older brother. And uh, I just pretty much, as I was, when I was old enough to walk, I was wrestling on the mats. Yeah. Uh, I went through all elementary school, middle school, high school wrestling, and then I represented Washington State at U.S. Nationals in Ve Las Vegas for like three years in a row. Took first in the state in wrestling, and then I I went to uh, right to MMA after that. Went started training with uh, Randy Couture, Dan Henderson, and Matt Lindland before there was even Team Quest. They haven't even, they hadn't even started the gym. That was like 1999, and uh, <clears throat> had my first fight within like six weeks. Yeah. Just jumped into the sport like real hard, really competitive, and uh, started fighting. So I, my first fight was one 15-minute round with a five-minute overtime. So you fought for 15 minutes straight. And uh, I was supposed to fight a kickboxer, but you know how it is in the amateurs. You show up that day, and they're like, oh, hey, by the way, your uh, fight's changed. Now you're fighting this guy over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dude's, um, you know, was a foreign ex exchange student from South Africa, uh, wrestling on the North Idaho wrestling team. And just, just, you know, jacked up tough wrestler, which is a complete different fight than, you know, going across the ring, taking a kickboxer down and beating him up, you know. So now I got a fight on my hands. I got a tough wrestler who's a scrapper in shape and ready to go. So it became a pretty exciting fight. So for my first fight, I ended up fighting him for eight minutes straight and then ended up choking him in, in like eight minutes and something. So that after that, I was hooked, uh, you know, started tra you know, training more competitively. Started training with Den uh, Dennis Hallman up in Olympia, Washington. You know Jeff Munson, uh, a lot of the old guys, Brad Blackburn, and a bunch of old school guys, uh, Matt Hume. Um, and then uh, within two years, I fought in the UFC. You know, um, we just started kicking butt, knocking out almost everybody, and ended up in the UFC within two years on my birthday. You have uh, trained with a lot of people, a lot of uh, famous MMA fighters and like legends. Uh, which fighter was the most uh, did they learn you most? Most. Uh, well, I, a lot, I learned a lot from everyone. You know what I mean? Like every fight I had, I I had learned something. You know, like Sean Shirk when I fought him, I I should have been using my wrestling a little more. I kind of broke my mental um, like focus. I, w I wasn't in the moment. Uh, I was winning the fight against Sean Shirk, the winner of us fought Matt Hughes for the world title in the UFC, and uh, I was winning, he takes me down, actually I had my hand posted on the fence, I defended all his takedowns, and then he uh, was trying to take me down, well the referee slapped my hand off the fence, because I, was I wasn't hanging on to the fence with my, with my hands, I just was posting on the fence. He slapped my hand down, and then he was able to get underneath my hips and pick me up, took me across the ring, sat me down, tried to slam me, but you can't slam a wrestler, it's pretty hard. Um, and then I just kind of sat there with a tight waist. He was, his head was dig, dug in on my hips. I was just hitting him in the ribs, looking at the ref, just saying, like, stand it up, stand it up. And then uh, I just hesitated for a minute. He was able to get my hips to the side from the fence, and then he dropped an elbow right over the top, and it just it split me open pretty good. Back then, uh, you know, they stopped the fight whenever you said, I couldn't see for a second. Yeah. That's all I said. I said, I, I just couldn't see for a second. I had blood in my eyes, but I'm good now. I'm ready to go. And they stopped the fight. So nowadays, they, you know, the sports um, developed and grown <clears throat> to where they, they would let it go on at this point. You know, they would, they, you know, they would let that fight keep going. But um, that fight, uh, when I fought uh, Ninja Hua from Brazil in Elite XC, that was a pretty, pretty fun fight. He was very tough. He took a lot of a lot of damage and uh, just kept coming, you know, staying in my face the whole time. That was probably one of the toughest competitors. Plus, he was just really good at, you know, ankle locks. I had to be real careful. Um, yeah, just a lot. Every fight has been pretty informative. Yeah. But uh, what's the biggest difference between, between MMA when you start to fight and now? What do you see? You know, uh, I see more athlete, athletes. You know, that's about the biggest thing I see is the you know the the athletic levels came up a little bit, but it's still the same game, man. I, I don't I don't see much much different. I, you know, much difference. I mean, I think some of the stand up guys are getting a little better, better boxing, uh, honing their skills in a little bit. But 
That's the same sport, man. Yeah, but you, your first UFC, uh, fight, uh, fight in UFC was 2002, uh, if, I'm, if I remember right. And then um, mm -hmm. UFC has grown a lot. UFC has become like mainstream, uh, biggest MMA organization in the world. What do you think about UFC re Revolution? Uh, I think it's good. I think it's great for the sport. I think it's rotten how uh, they've kind of taken from all the fighters, but I, uh, I you know, I, I hope that's going to start developing into where the fighters start making more money. You know, when I started this career, it was before you know anybody really knew about it. You know, I was doing it when you know no one saw it on TV, no one knew what was going on. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> I always thought by the time I I retire, everybody will start making money. <laughs> That's kind of how it's turning out to be. Uh, yeah. And um, what do you think about the Reebok deal that UFC have made? What's that? The Reebok deal they have made with, uh, like, you only sponsor in the Octagon is Reebok for you. What do you think about uh, that? Uh, I, think, I think the same way all the fighters think. I think it was kind of like a deal for, you know, the organization instead of the fighters. I think a few of the good, you know, the big name fighters got, got paid well. But all the other guys lost a lot of money. You know, they couldn't have their. I mean, there was guys that were making, you know, fifty to a hundred grand in sponsorships, and then all of a sudden they're making like fifteen grand. You know, like how how does that make sense yeah. for the fighters? You know, they looked out. They did not look out for the fighters. I mean, if they they should have made made a deal where they could still have their sponsorships, but you know, they they still had to wear the uh, Reebok shorts or something. That would have been that would have been a better you know scenario. But it, it was it was bullshit in my mind. I see. I see that you have a lot of experience in the MMA world. Uh, you have been, like I saw one picture on your Facebook that you have like been in U even Tanner's um, uh, corner at UFC 51. I think when he was he won the UFC, he became the UFC champ. Uh, can you give us uh, like uh, what is your worst uh, worst um, memory from U MMA world and what is your best memory from MMA world? You uh, I guess. You know, I get my my worst memories are like when uh, you're training with a good a good friend and they, uh, you know, they get hurt or um, you know they lose a fight they train really hard for or even worse than that like something like in the case of Dennis Holman, for a long time we were training really really hard in practice and then he'd come out to fight in these you know big big events and um, he had this. Uh, like autoimmune disease that was messing up his, his, um, basically it was like an adrenaline dump. So as soon as his adrenaline kicked in at all, it would dump really bad. And then he had no cardio at all. So he'd be like within a minute, not even be able to hold his hands up hardly. And, uh, until he got that fixed, he was, I mean, he just beat, he lost to so many guys that he could, should have just smashed through. And, uh, so that was kind of hard to see, you know, a guy that's training really hard, trying to do his best and then can't even go out and perform the way he wants to, you know? So it was real hard to, that was, that was probably some of the hardest, you know, situations I've, I've been in. Yeah. What is your best memory in your, like you have been in MMA world for a long time. What is your best memory from this time? Um, there's a lot of good memories, man. Uh, so, like, of course, uh, Evan Tanner, you know, being in his corner and uh, training him through that, and then uh, him coming out there and winning the fight, that was pretty, pretty awesome. It was a big, a big plus. Um, also, um, when, uh, <clears throat> when um, Drew Fickett, he beat uh, Josh Koscheck, yeah. I was cornering him, and, um, you know, he just come out of nowhere and, and kicked him and knocked him out. <clears throat> so, there's been some really good wins. Um, uh, another one was pretty tough too. Uh, Dennis Holman and I flew from from here to Russia, and it was like a last minute fight. And uh, I think we were in not Omsk, we were in like uh, Novosibirsk. And um, we went over there, but part of the deal was we had to we had to do like three different connections. Um, you know, fly for thirty some hours straight, pretty much get off of the jet maybe wait an hour or two, get back on their jet, fly, 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 all these connections. And then right when we land, we had to go straight to the, right straight to the hotel, you know, check our stuff in, straight to the event center and made the fight. That's how close it was. So he, we had like a D, edema in our, in our shins, right? Like we could push the skin in our, into our shins like an inch, you know, and it would just stay there, you know, like, so our, we totally weren't acclimated. We weren't ready for the fight, but, He's, you know, he's tough, and he just said, fuck it, I'm going to do it. 
So he goes out there and uh, wins the first round, but, but I can tell, I can see he was petering out pretty good by the end of the first round. And then the second round, uh, the guy starts teeing off on him. He's a pretty good stand-up guy. And then um, I was like, Dennis, you got to get control of his hips. He shoots in and gets his hips, takes his back and jumps on his back and, and does a standing, standing rear naked choke. Guy taps out, wins the fight. So that was pretty cool too. Yeah, that sounds nice. Uh, but who's your favorite MMA fighter right now? Um, I don't really have a favorite. I just like guys that um, aren't scared to uh, risk things. You know, I, I I'm not really a fan of like you know George St. Pierre just because he's like so careful and doesn't risk you know getting knocked out or getting in the scram getting in the in the fist fight. You know, I like guys who want to walk across the ring and keep walking forward and throwing down and bring the fight to the other guy. That's exciting. That's what I want to see. I want to see two guys wanting to finish the fight the whole time. Yeah. Uh, your last fight was at Bellator uh, 137, I think, last year. And um, do, you gonna f do you have some plans to fight again? Yeah, so basically both my last two fights, when I fought OSP and when I fought um, Ben Reader, those both were on 10 days notice. So I was out of shape. I was in a bad spot in my life. You know, I was addicted to opiates because I had like 16 surgeries. So while I was fighting those guys, I was withdrawing on opiates while I was fighting. So <laughs> not only was I out of shape, I was withdrawing on opiates, and I scrapped these dudes and, you know, lost decisions. So that kind of pisses me off. I got I to gotta get in shape, get, you know, I think I'm going to go to Brazil on the next training session and just push hard and, and get some good wins, man. But erase all the bad Erase all the bad shit in my life, you know? Yeah, yeah. But when, how, how do you plan to do a comeback? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work as an electrician here, uh, here in my hometown for like, uh, probably three, three or four weeks till I get my, um, passport renewed. And then I'm just going to ship out, man, and just start, start pushing hard. Okay. Benji, uh, it was a pleasure to me to do an interview with you and thank you for this time. Yeah, you got it. Um, what else did I want to say? Uh. Yeah, I had some things I wanted to chat with you about, but um, yeah, that's it, man. Cool. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Take care, brother. Bye-bye.